Da yep, da it's Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. And this week's podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all in one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up, tailor to your brand of business, and optimize for every device. Easily launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience and sell anything from products to content to time. All in one place, all on your terms, okay? So head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Hezekiah Walker. What's up? How was your week, brother? Hey, man. It was uh, it was great. No, the week was great. You was in the Hamptons? I was out in the Hamptons, enjoying the rest of summer. I feel like I got everything I wanted out of summer, so I'm ready to get back after it this year. Why are people so, like... Enamored by the Hamptons? Not the Hamptons. Why do you want huh. summer to end so bad? Summer technically doesn't end oh, until September 22nd. I don't, I don't want it to end. Oh, Okay. I don't want it to end. I want it to continue going. Like September 3rd after Labor Day, you're supposed to like stop sleeping with white women. No. But summer no, 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 goes no. until September 22nd. No, no, no. no, no I don't no. understand why people are so like, oh, we got to get rid of summer. Summer's over. Like, why? Wait, who, who is petitioning to get rid of I've summer? I've been seeing people online like it's the last weekend of summer. Who says who? Yeah. Summer's till September 22nd. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Rock out. But it's not summer once it's September. I mean, says who? Says like, let's see what climate change does. Says let's see weather. what global warming does. In LA, it's red hot right now. But I, I see hoodies out already on the street. Because New York is be, be ready to rob people. This shit ain't got nothing to do with no goddamn weather. Like they just ready to get back to rob. Fair, see, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. It's easier to rob in the winter. It's That's easy a to rob, man. <laughs> How um, was your week? Week was good. Are you ready to be back? For what? Like what? what like, are back? you ready to be back? Summer. It felt like. Summer, everything was chill, taking things easy. Now it's back in the grind time. Are you ready to be back in grind? No. Really? This is not my life anymore. Interesting. I work smarter, not harder. Okay. What are you grinding for? <laughs> <laughs> you think I've worked this hard for 26 years? You're still waking up at 4 years in the morning. Because I like doing it. I like going to do radio. Right. That's right. Not a, but that's not even a grind. I think about that every day. I'm like, God damn. I really get paid I to get do what to it do. is that I love yeah. to do. I get to do this. Like yeah. we're we're sitting here right now doing a podcast. Yeah, it's crazy. That we've been doing for eleven years. Yeah, that we enjoy crazy. doing. Like it's like the, the, the grind. Yeah. <laughs> for what? <laughs> nah. Yeah. No disrespect to nobody still on it. Nah, I hear what you're saying. But it's actually you're respecting it more by by acknowledging that this is not. I think there's just hours that we work that are long, but that doesn't mean it's a grind. It's something that we want to do. It's enjoyable. Yeah, listen, there's people out there doing things, working long hours uh, that they hate. That they hate. Hate. And I, we we drive by them, we watch them. I appreciate mm -hmm. your service. There's Amen. certain things I know I'm not going to be. I'm not doing. Like I, I'm not. That's not my path. That wasn't my path. Hmm. This is our path right here. Yeah. You know. So when you say get back to the grind. Oh, man. I look at the end of the year different because September comes after Labor Day. I'm already in the holiday season, baby. By the time October comes, it's Halloween, then it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas, it's New Year's. So you work half the year is what you're trying to say. You work until summer and then you take off. I don't know when the last time I worked, Joe. <laughs> I'm being totally honest. When you do something that you love, you never work a day in your life. This nah, has not felt facts. like work in so long. No, nah, that's facts. I don't know what I, I, I don't know what that I think means. It's, I think it's more in terms of like I agree with you 100. percent And we're the luckiest in the world to even get to do this shit. I but, watch you on stage in Atlantic City. You're not working, bro. No, nah, that's just fun. <laughs> it's pure fun. No, I'm it's, saying it's, it's pure fun. Working. I see some comedians work. <laughs> okay, I see some comedians that work. No, nah, that, that work. shit was fun. They they go out there and they fucking. You know when you you know when comedians gotta work Ooh. when they jokes don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they go out there and they tell some jokes and them shit ain't landing, Ooh. it's like Ooh. 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 time to cook. Get your hard hat, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to be a long night. <laughs> okay, and that's just that's just what it is. It's like I'm, I have not worked in a long time. I thank God. God is good, man. 
We are just here uh, doing what we love. Yeah, that's true. You know? Yeah. And I if it ever you. feels like work, you probably shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. I really feel like that. Yeah. If what you're doing feels like work, you probably shouldn't be doing there's, it. There's aspects of everything that you do that are going to feel like work. Like, sometimes you got to do things you don't want to do to do the things you do. Like, I'm sure there's interviews. Well, maybe not you at the point you are now. But, like, I'm sure there's things that, like, you're like, okay, I have to do this. But it affords me to do all these other things that I really love. Not a single thing? Nah. Not no more. I, I, that what you're saying right now, I purposely put a boundary on. I'm not doing nothing I don't want to do because I'm too aggy about it. Yeah. At yeah, my yeah. age, being married, having four kids, if yeah. I'm doing anything I don't want to do, I'm gonna make everybody miserable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, 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 I'm by the time I gotta get up in the morning, like oh fuck, I gotta be here. You know what I mean? To get dressed, to travel, to go somewhere. If I don't want to be there, yeah. I already know I'm about to make everybody miserable. So yeah. I simply don't do things I don't want to do. What about when you were doing the promo run for the book? Love that. But none of that felt like work. Like, no, oh, that, I got to yeah, go to another a, city. Yo, listen, you know why I love it? Because I always say that you don't really get to see um, what your value is until you're out. Yeah, and and you then, don't. And when you're selling something, you know what I'm saying? Like, Because you don't have a lot of face-to-face -face with your fans. That's right. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't do stand-up. Like, it's a little do, different. Yeah. That's right. Uh, and even when you see ratings and stuff, that's one thing. So it's you, a number on a piece of paper. That's it's, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you go to a, when you go into a bookstore, selling out a bookstore, see something, you, you see people. people. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. No, and, I, I see that. Yeah. And this is my third book. So you got people coming out there bringing the first two books and like that's a totally different totally that doesn't I feel think, like work at all. I think you can love what you do and also do a lot of it to the point where it's like, okay, this is exhausting me, but I'm still grateful I get to do it and I love it. Yes. But that doesn't that's different. Though. Exhaustion doesn't mean that you don't want to do that's it. That's right. It is just exhausting. So that's right. I think that's what I meant more like the next three months. For me, it is going to be very intense. I'm ready to be exhausted. Then. So I'm ready to be exhausted for the again. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I look yeah. forward to that because once the holidays yeah. come, and then you get another break That's and you feel right. like you earned it because you worked your ass off for X amount of. I already got X my vacation plan. Where are you going? You, you know, I'm going. Anguilla. Yeah, this uh, I've been going to Africa the last couple of years, last yeah. few years actually for New Year's. You got enough of them. <laughs> no, I'm nah, it's sick. Just, it's just a lot. Sick of these motherfuckers. No, nah, I love bro. Africa. I love I love Zanzibar when we went. Love Ghana. Yeah. It's just a, the travel is crazy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because it takes a day to get over there. Yeah. So it's just like this shit. Let's just do something cool, and then you know, South Carolina, Anguilla. I'm good. You're gonna go to South Carolina. Yeah, for Thanksgiving. We all do that for Thanksgiving. Okay. Yeah. And then Christmas, you're like winter break break. Christmas, yep. Yeah. Christmas is home. Nothing yeah. like waking up to the kids, you yeah. know, opening up the presents and everything else yeah. after that. Yo, do you feel like uh, if you stay home for Christmas, though, that, that you're very accessible to people? To who? So like, oh, you've just created these boundaries where you're 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 <laughs> like a psycho. Mean? Yeah, I respect that. Who? Maybe there's a time in your life that you were accessible where you didn't create the boundaries. Because sometimes I think, like, if you're at home during the holidays, sometimes it doesn't exactly feel like a break because now you have free time and now you have to do all the things that you wouldn't have time to do. You have to... People are asking you to do certain things. You're like, well, I am here. I should do that. And then you don't have taken the break. How long have you known me? There had to be a time where, where you would do, do that. Where do I go? I really only go out... I go where I want to go yeah. and I'm around people I want to be around. You're not surprising me with yeah, anything. Yeah, it's just yeah. not happening. Yeah, <laughs> I don't just go places. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's not happening. I guess what I'm understanding is like I, I understand going away for the holidays outside of just the excitement of traveling, but also because it truly allows you and your family to just be with each other. I love it. Whereas sometimes when you're at home, I don't know. You don't feel like this. I don't know if you guys ever feel like that. Like every chore or errand that you didn't get to because you were busy during the year. Mm. All of a sudden, you feel like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix the door today. All right, let me get on the oh, phone no, with the AC wife. people. Uh, she handles all that. That's her thing. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm constantly telling her to sit down. Yeah. Like, that's her thing. Like, she loves to do that type of stuff. She, and now you got a week, so you're like, okay, I might as well take advantage of this. But then you realize at the end of the week, like, did I just waste my time off? That was this weekend for me. Okay. And I felt like I was missing something. Y'all are crazy. 
Yeah, because you should have been taken off the last week of summer. Everybody else, I'm, I'm seeing this guy. I don't even know where you were. <laughs> in uh, Mafi. Right. And I was Man. like, Jesus Christ. And I'm like trying to measure screens for my windows. <laughs> I also got trauma from growing up. Like, like you know, like because when my father would come home and I'd be home, I'd always try to act like I was doing something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like instead of just being a bum, so I would just jump up and act like I was doing something. Yeah. And so now it's like when a person asks me what I'm doing and I say nothing. You love it. You motherfucking right. I earned the right to not do a goddamn thing. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Okay? I love laying on my couch, being with my kids, doing absolutely positive. No, that's nothing. wise. Yeah. That's, that's going to be the hardest adjustment, I think, for the next few months. Is like during the summer, I pretty much just got to hang with my daughter like every day. Mm -hmm. And now it's back to... You going on the road crazy. I'm going to be back on the road and like... Shooting a special. Yeah. You're finishing the year strong. No, it's, that's awesome. Yeah. But like, it's it's great to just have, you know, you're there, you're with her all day. She's just fucking smiling. She's stoked every time she sees Best you. And like, How yeah. many months is she now? Seven months. Already? Son, it's crazy. What the fuck? Know, right? She yeah. started crawling. God, she said, dad, da. Oh, my she, God. But she goes, she goes, dad, 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 dad. So, but I count that as dad, dad. And uh, <laughs> definitely ain't mama. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I, mean? I, I don't think people realize how fast kids grow, especially Bro? my man. And I don't know if it's because my young, like I got three, like my my two year old is about to be three, but she's been on it since she's been one. Like the way she talks, the way she communicates, everything. So it's just like you're not gonna want to miss that. You got That's five months. You know, once they hit one, you it's it's, it, out it's over. That's the thing. It's over. I'm I'm already now. I'm already now like, oh shit, we passed the stage where you just chill in my arms. Now you're excited to crawl. Ugh. And every moment you're trying to see what's out there and looking at every oh, different thing. Oh, you see them come to you. Oh my God. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. But remember when they were just born and you hold them and they sleep? Yeah. Those days are done. Done. Like that's... And that shit goes so fast. It's better now though, because they when they crawl to you, oh, it's when, they, when you walk in the house and oh. they, they, you know that this person knows your daddy. Oh my god, come on, man! The excitement, come on, man! And then you see him do that for someone else. You're like, hey, yo, what the fuck you doing, man? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Chill, chill with them smile. <laughs> what they doing to mommy, so, grandparents? No, my, yo, know, Mark held my, uh, my, my daughter, and my daughter started crying, and everybody was trying to like feel bad for Mark, like, oh, it's okay. I said, good job. That's right. Any man puts their hands on you. You motherfucking right. <laughs> you cry immediately. Especially dreamy looking motherfuckers like Mark. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Damn, you farted when you started talking about Mark. That's flirting. <laughs> That's crazy hey, flirting. Bro. Hey, bro. <laughs> That's crazy I had to flirting. make room. When your butt screams, <laughs> when your butt screams because you're talking about another man, that's insane. Don't even try to, the, the shit that you said is super gay earlier. What I say about when Mark me? walked in the room, he said, damn, I think you lost some of your bubble or whatever. That's not what I said. What did you say? I said, Mark, your ass ain't as fat as it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? No, that is what you said, but that yeah, is. That's not gay. But before, hello is kind of crazy. Yeah. I did say hello. <laughs> nah, did not say no, hello. you did it. Yeah. That was the first thing you said. Bro. Not say, why are you working out your wrists while you tell you? You can't even help it. <laughs> Listen, man, you got to find something to objectify. Like, objectifying women is funny. You, know? <laughs> you don't do it to women no more, but I can't stop. It's funny. And when you, you, oh, that's when you funny. married and you older, you don't objectify a woman no more. You need more. the non-alcoholic beer of objectification. You, know you need the O'Doul's. That's right. Hey, Omar, oh, get them Those cheeks in there. <laughs> Mark, what happened to your ass, bro? Hey, you bro, ass. it's like the blade serum. It don't hit just like blood, <laughs> but it'll get you through the day. It'll get you through the fucking day, man. <laughs> wow. Yo, rest in peace, Fat Man Scoop. R.I.P., man. So crazy, yo. It's actually really crazy. He died at 53 years old. 53 is very, very, very young. I don't know what the cause of death was, but I mean, just watching... You think of the irony, yo. His last words was... Everybody make some noise. You're on the stage getting the crowd hype and doing what everybody knows you for, and then you collapse and they have to do CPR on you. So I'm just I'm I'm just gonna assume it had to be something cardiovascular. Mm -hmm. That's just my assumption. Yeah. So rest in peace to Fat Man School. Only thing I can tell you, man, is go out there and motherfucking just bro, take care of yourself. Bro, beat the doctor up.
Son. Like everything. I the cardiovascular cardiovascular. We talk a lot about mental health. We don't talk about cardiovascular health enough, bro. Not at all. Heart disease is taking brothers out. Men, that's like that's the number one kill, cause of death, right? Hmm. Heart disease. I think it's the number one cause of death in human beings. Yeah, uh, in, human in beings. Americans. Yeah. Yeah, in Americans, right? Yeah. It's like, come on, bro. Take care of yourself, man. Go get your motherfucking heart checked. Check your arteries. That's the thing, too. Like, I, I, I did the EKGs. I've done the stress test, the yeah. heart monitoring, all of that. But you got to go let them put that fucking dye in you that warms your body up mm. and put you in that machine, and then they can look all through your arteries. I don't know what the technical term for it. Dr. Puma called it the Soren Medical Scan. Yeah. Let them look at your heart, see what your arteries are, see where the calcification yep. is, if you have any, the plaque, all of that shit. Go do that shit, man. Because this shit is out, of, this is, it's out of control. The heart attacks and strokes that are happening nowadays... It's out of control, bro. That Maxine, bro. This guy. You get maxicated and then <laughs> vaccinated or whatever. If it's what, you know, these things end up happening. Were they happening before, Chris? Yes. Probably not. Sure. Chris, yes. Sure. You cannot dispute that it probably has some. I don't know a doctor alive nowadays that doesn't say, yes, there's something to the Maxine, bro. Your your people, it's, it's your either, people's it's, it's, vaccine. It's either the vaccine. Your people's vaccine. It's either the, we're say, we're talking like this to avoid getting flagged. It's either the vaccine or the vid. One of the two. I mean, and your right. people created both. Thank you, but uh, I don't know. Wilt Chamberlain, one of the greatest athletes of all time. He fucked a million women. Died AIDS. of uh, AIDS. Uh, AIDS. Heart disease. <laughs> Probably got AIDS. No, he died of heart disease. <laughs> Tremendous athlete even into his 50s. Who? Will Chamberlain. Well before the days of vaccines. You fuck a million women. You fuck a million women, you're going to die. Either your heart going to give out or, <laughs> you know, or. I mean, it's, it's, it's. Or. You got the hits. Yeah. yeah. You might have got that. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, he had sex with a lot of women. It's, he had uh, sex with a lot of women, Chris. I think it's diet is the big problem in America. You think it's just diet? And increasingly the world. But yeah, we. So you don't think it's nothing to do with Maxine? Well, it could be diet. Damn. Damn, we ain't talked to... When the last time we talked to people? To whom? Just to... Oh, oh so I ain't tell y'all about the DNC. <laughs> what was oh, that Oh, wow. You no, know, you bought that. a bussy and it made me just think of that. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you something, man. Um, I mean, the DNC, it was a fun experience to go yeah. to. I just... It's like a pep rally for your team. That's literally all it is. Yes. The RNC, DNC, they're pep rallies for your team. You go out there, you have a big pep rally, and then you hope your team goes out there and wins the championship. Yeah. I just don't think that's what politics should be. Yes. Wait, did we talk about this on the... We, no, we talked about it at the... On the phone? At the show, yeah. At the, oh, at the show. Yes, yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. Politics should not be that way. Yeah, because the second you're pot committed to a side... You can't be objective. You can't be objective, yeah. and you, and I'm I'm a I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. Yes. Every year I say the same thing. And We're the, going to the motherfucking Super Bowl. And nothing can changes. Can nobody tell yeah, me yeah, different? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I, I can watch TV all day, and you can tell me how bad my team sucks. I can look at all the moves we didn't make. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. We're going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. That's because I have fandom. For my Dallas Cowboys. It's yeah. literally in my blood. My daddy was a Dallas Cowboys fan. Yeah. My daddy tased the Marine on 9-11 at MetLife Stadium over his Cowboy fandom, right? Yeah. So it's in me. Yeah. I can't feel, I shouldn't feel like that about like a political party. Yeah. Yeah. I should I listen that. to both people. Yeah. Right? Whoever's yeah. running, I don't get like uh, president, mayor, whatever it is. I should listen to everybody, and whoever has the best ideas is who I Vote for. Yeah. And it should be like that every election. I don't care what election it is. I don't care if it's a presidential election. I don't care if it's a local election. It should be like that with every election. You'll never be like that if you only are rooting for one team. Yeah, I agree. 100%. And so, it's a, so it was a great experience, but it literally is a pep rally. And would you do it again? Would you... Yeah, as a, as a, as a media personality, were you, definitely. Were you caught up in the energy there? Did it make you go, okay, I really want... You know, uh, Kamala to win. I wanted her to win regardless, because I mean, yeah. I supported her in 2020. Like, yeah. I've, yeah. I've liked Kamala since I had her on Breakfast Club in 2018. Like, yeah. I've always liked Kamala. But um, it was a fun experience to be at as a media personality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I'm a person that sits around and watches CNN, MSNBC all day. Plus, 
in the history of Breakfast Club, I've interviewed most of these people anyway. You know what I'm saying? So it's just so you like, have a familiarity with Absolutely. Them. The only yeah. person I think I interviewed that I never had spoken with was uh, Chuck Schumer. Oh, yeah, and then you spoke to Chuck. Yeah, I had Chuck on. What, he, what was Chuck talking about? Chuck, what was Chuck Gangster talking shit? about? Yeah, Chuck was talking Supreme about Supreme Court. He about yeah, he talked about the Supreme Court, just all the stipulations that need to be put on the Supreme Court, how they're no longer a legitimate institution. You know, the right wing, these very rich, greedy people who didn't want to pay any taxes, who didn't want the government to do any, you know, they said, I built my company with my own hands, although half of them inherited it. Yeah, and they right. said, yeah. how dare that's right. your government tell me how I had to treat my workers, my, my customers, or the land and air and water that I own. That's what they did. And they realized, Charlemagne, that they couldn't get this done even when they controlled the elected branches of government, House, Senate, because there was, and President, because it was so far to the effing right, so far to mm. the right. And so they tried to take over the courts. We have an obligation to try and stop them. The Supreme Court is a morass. Now, who would have thought of this? The ethics of that court. Yeah. So these rich, fat, rich people are paying for cars, for trips. At the same time, they're paying somebody, to, some law firm to go to a lawyer and make their case. Mm. That is outrageous. And I'll tell you who should, we should blame, among others. The Chief Justice John Roberts, who once said he's calling balls and strikes, he could stop this with the flick of his pen. Where the hell is he? What? And then when I called him a coward, when I called, uh, when I said, you know, I said something about that, that's the cowardice of the Democrats, he goes, hey, Charlemagne, I'm from Brooklyn. You should have slapped the shit out of him right now. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Yeah. Fastest that, way man. to get a fair charge. Yeah. You slap somebody like Chuck Schumer at the deal. You know, it's Fred, that's federal. That's federal. What do you mean? If you do something like that at the DNC, yeah. that's federal. Why? Because I guess when you when uh, when they do those presidential elections and stuff like that, and it's all of that secret service and everything around, like now you're on federal grounds. Like it's not no longer it's So it's assaulting a federal officer? No, you just would catch a charge. Whatever your charge would be would be a federal charge doing it there. Even if I got into a fight with just somebody in the crowd. Oh really? Oh yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. Absolutely. So you can't choice. you can't attack a senator. I don't think you should ever attack a sitting senator. Okay, or a non-sitting senator. Or a non-sitting senator. Yeah, but you definitely shouldn't, shouldn't do, it, do the it, DNC. it at the DNC. <laughs> no. Scott, got it. So if you were going to do it, don't do it. Don't that do day. it at the goddamn so you DNC. You can avoid no. the, the charges. Got it. Shout out to J Lo. She back in the streets. Did you see that? That picture was crazy. Click on the pic. The picture was crazy. We don't have Taylor here, so we don't have the memes of the week. We have Chris doing Taylor's job Chris, here. Chris, the pod father, the original pod the father. The original pod father. Let's go next page. How do you feel, Chris, about everybody calling himself the pod father now when you were getting called the pod father 20 years ago? I think ago. Bill Simmons was the first guy to get it, to be fair. Really? Nah, 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 nah. Bill was the pod father before you? Nah, 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 nah. nah. Really? I don't know. Next shot. I want to see the one we all thinking about. J Lo bad, yo. God bless J Lo. There man. you go. Why is that shit covered? Because you got to do that on Instagram now. Oh fucking a! Can't Chris. show the cheeks no more. I saw her out in the Hamptons. You did? Yeah. By herself? I saw Jamie Beyonce too. In the Hamptons? Yeah. Who was J Lo with though? Ben wants. She was to just know. bike riding <laughs> with some dude. Really? But like the guy. Uh, looked like security. I don't know how to say. Oh, that. got you, got you, got you. Yeah. You need security in the Hamptons? I guess if you J-Lo, right? No, but, you know, they 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 got that shit. Do you think that Ben Affleck saw that picture and got jealous? Nah, because he knew he had that shit in the 20s. He's like, yo, that shit used to be all right. <laughs> you know, like, he had the best version of it. He had the now version. Like, oh, shit. J-Lo living her best life. But who's she trying to trap now? Why is she doing this? What's the point of all this? It's Instagram, you know what I'm saying? But, like, like she's, she's just trying to get over it? I don't even know if she cares. I just think it was a photo dump. I mean, there's no question that Ben is going to take, take down something better, though. J Lo is bad. I don't know. If you, it, what, who? I don't know. Bro. What you mean you don't know? Who can Ben get? Ben, you don't even know what color that shit is. Who? J Lo? Yeah. What you mean? <laughs> Man, shut <laughs> up. Man. <laughs> you, you don't know what color the cheat sheet on J Lo. Listen, J Lo <laughs> still J Lo, bro. Yo, don't get him yo, with up, all due respect to J Lo, but you don't know what color that shit is. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't want to know what it means. Me neither. 
don't know that shit neither. I don't know it neither. I'm with you, man. Every time I see Ben Affleck, and this is coming from a straight stress, man place. Stress. I just want y'all to know this is coming from a straight man place, right? Mm-hmm. You know why he looks so stressed? Because he's been dating a Latina twice. He, he don't got enough. He, nah, nah, no, no, no. He don't got enough. So. Charlamagne. You, know, go you look haven't at that dated picture. a Latina. Go look at that picture where he got the cigar and his, his cigarette in his hand. He's like. He's thinking about, I just don't have no, enough. No, he's thinking, why did I get back on the bike? It's too much for him. No. It's oh, too yeah, much it's too for much him. Drama. It's too no, much drama. No, it's too much, no. period, man. No, no, no. It's too much, period. <laughs> it's too much, period. It is too much, period. <laughs> period don't stop number the sentence. Yeah, but don't period that the Latinas man, got. Be a man, Ben. You can't handle it. He he he's not man. built for, for Latina. What is she, Puerto Rican now? Yeah. Puerto Rican. He's not built for that. That's what I'm telling a 50 you. A 50-year-old... Pre-menopausal, post-menopausal Latina. J Lo wanted all the time when she wanted. Oh no. Okay. Oh, that's oh. what I'm saying. Oh. Oh. Y'all been talking about two separate things for yeah. a long time. Oh, so. <laughs> oh don't she's have horny. She's horny. Yes. <laughs> oh, that might be true. Ben I don't, don't have enough. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I know right now, I don't. Damn. I don't have enough for that. She needs it all the time like that. No. She OG. Yeah, I can but, look at Ben and tell, like, Ben is like, oh, my God. She, she wants more dick. Yes. She wants more. He probably <laughs> started smoking cigarettes just to get a break. I'm telling you. He'd do fucking Daredevil 2 before he fucking... <laughs> yeah. before, before, he go, before he go back and try J-Lo again. But how many yo. times a day do you think she wanted? <laughs> you think it's multiple Bro, times a day? look at the day? pictures. Do you think it's multiple Look at the pictures. Hold on, man. Start at the beginning. Go back to the beginning. Not multiple a day. Go back to the beginning. Let's break this down. So y'all kept looking at the dunk. But no, go back to the first one. That's the first one? No, go back. What's the first go one? Go back. Okay. This right here. Come on, man. She looking at you like, oh, it was a summer. Huh. You know what I mean? Ooh. That's the first one. Letting you know, oh, it was a summer. Because I'm with somebody that's giving it to me the way I want it to be given to. All right? Ben. Now look at the next one. Look at the next one. No, 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 no. You're going too fast, Chris. You're trying to get to the dump too fast. Go back to the second one. Go back to the, <laughs> go back to the written one. Right there. Everything is unfolding in divine order. Fuck Ben. Fuck boy Ben. That's what that uh, is? Yes, fuck boy yeah. Ben. Oh, no. Okay, yeah, I found somebody that can do it the way I want it to be no! done. No! Boom! Now you get the ass shot. No. See, y'all not looking at the whole storyline, right? Now no. you're looking at the ass shot. All right, go to the next one, Chris. She's in bloom and unbothered, out of reach, and at peace. In bloom. What does in bloom mean? Super ripe. Oh, no. Come on, man. Flower, open. All right? Unbothered, out of reach, and at peace. You can't even get next to me, Ben. Now look at me. All beautiful. Ready to have a nice dinner. Man. You know what I do after dinner, right, what? Ben? What? Right, Ben? What? Yeah. Go to the next one. Now look at that. Ha <laughs> ha. After sex glow. You think that's after <laughs> sex? After sex. Sean, and you think that's right after sex? Looking at you. She got the nice little demure smile. Yeah, she does. When she was like, Ben. Ben. Oh my God. What's the next pick? I know you don't have enough. Ben. Ooh. Whoa. And her shirt says dream. What does that mean? That means you're going to always dream about me, Ben. And oh, you're going to no. dream about how you could never please me the way I needed to be pleased. Oh, that's terrifying. Come on, man. Then the ice cream lick? Nah. Come on, bro. Nah. The ice cream fucking lick? No. Come on, man. No. Ben don't stand a fucking chance, yo. What's Ben posting? <laughs> ben don't even got Instagram. <laughs> ben, ben can't even stand to be on IG while Jenny from the block is out here still looking hot. Yeah. Okay. Man. Jesus Christ. That's all. Mm. All right. Well, all right. You That's know, all it is. Ben respect. Just, respect. Respect, though. man. No. But Ben, I always said Ben. Free Ben, though. Free Ben. Nah, Ben don't. He never deserved J Lo. That's that's rude. Yeah, that's, no, that's, that's rude. No, I always felt like that. That's See, a little that's hate rude. right there. That's not hate. You're being a little rude right nah, there. Nah, he nah. got it twice. If you ruin two superheroes, yeah, Daredevil and Batman. Nah, he killed oh, Batman. Okay, he no, killed he, Batman. no, Batman. he was it was horrible. Phenomenal as Batman. He was Garbage. probably the worst Batman. The worst Batman ever. He was probably the worst Batman. Worst Batman. Ever. There's no way. Easily the worst. Yes. Worst Batman yes. ever. Worse than Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer was Batman. 
See, y'all don't even know all the Batman. I don't you remember Batman. with super confidence. <laughs> like, Come on, bro. <laughs> this is the fucking pod. That was, this is, what, what is the point of having a pod if you don't say shit, you, you don't angry. know nothing about you got angry what saying, hey, extra hey, come on, bro. <laughs> That's hey. what podding is about, okay? Yeah, you're right. You're right. My bad. Um, My bad. My bad. Boosie compares men painting their nails. Damn. What's this about, Chris? I was just catching strays everywhere. No. I was just catching strays. Oh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trade Uzi places. He says if Uzi a girl. man is painting his nails, it's equal to a man wearing a thong up his ass. Real talk. Get it sexy. <laughs> Get it sexy. <laughs> Alex? Uh, I wouldn't trade places with Boosie, so I'm fine with him, whatever he said. What's Whoa. That mean? I just, you know, just serving some of the decisions he has made. I wouldn't have made those same decisions. And so if he feels that way about men who paint their nails, he's fine to have those opinions. That was a gay answer, Alex. You yeah, you got I better, mean you need a better retort. No. Yeah. That was good. What I you ain't mean? shooting. You're not sh but what does that mean? What do you how does Son, that I'm J Lo, I'm I'm unbothered. Nah, those pictures definitely scream bothered from J Lo. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's very bothered. Yeah, she's very bothered. Oh, she ain't like bothered. So, <laughs> look at that ice cream. Do you yeah. think a man painting his nails is equal to a man wearing a thong up his ass? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Would you ever wear a thong if it looked better with your outfit? Like if it, <laughs> no, I mean, like if, like if you were wearing tight pants and it, you didn't want to show the panty lines, would you wear a thong? Just to, don't just the panty don't lines too. The panty lines too. All right. Don't knock it. All right, fuck because there's probably the time you probably never thought you'd be painting your nails either. That is exactly. very. That's you know very what I'm saying? Yeah. So let's say you like let's say skinny yoga pants for men become popular. It's not the craziest thing. Okay. And you could wear your regular boxers this and have the, is, the line a, right here on your thigh. <laughs> what, what, he's what, an asshole. What, what, that what, visual is funny as shit. What? The boxers with the thong look. Here you go again, look. thinking all about it. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Just thinking about it nonstop. Would what? you wear the thong, Alex? No, I wouldn't wear the thong. Why not? I wouldn't wear the thong. I don't believe you. So if you was in Spain, all right? Yeah. Y'all on the beach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a nudist colony, but you don't want to get nude. I'd rather be so, nude than wear so, a thong. So what, what they the give fuck? you to wear covers the front, mm -hmm. but it's the thong in the back, cheeks out. No, I'd rather have my dick out than be wear a thong. Nobody can see you. Nobody can see you. You're on the beach. You're by yourself. Nobody can so, see you. Why? No would cameras I, allowed. No tan lines. No nothing. Yo, fuck y'all. Five. <laughs> no, <laughs> no cameras allowed. No nothing. Yeah, it's nah. just you in, your, in the comfort and of your woman. And your woman. And your lady. And your what? girl's like, yo, put this on. <laughs> nah. Yeah. For me, she goes, let's both wear thongs. <laughs> nah, I'm good. I don't believe you. I'm good. Just for the comfort of your own soul. I think one of y'all have a thong on right now the way you're advocating for it. No, nah, we just, nah. listen, I'm advocating Prove for it. you. Prove it. Because you got to prove it. I'm just, nah, you, prove here's it. The thing, you haven't Why disproved, you can't prove? Why you not going to prove it? You haven't disproved. Why you not going to prove it? If you want to see me naked, just nah, say it. I'm just saying. It. If you got a thong <laughs> on, just Listen, don't show you it. haven't been able to disprove Boosie's theory, though. He said it's equal to. Do you think a man painting his nails is equal to having a thong this up a good, I don't think it's question. equal because it's like if you're doing the nail art, it's because it's like self-expression. Nobody's going to see the thong, so why am I doing it? They, they can see the thong if you want them to. Yeah, just poke it out. Over the hips. Well, like the fucking the low rise jeans. Yeah. You see the, the whale tail? Yeah. No, I'm not doing the that. whale tail. <laughs> What's the whale tail? That's what they called it back in the day. What? When girls wore low rise jeans and you saw the little thong come out, it looked really? like a whale tail. I like that for you, Alex. I think a whale tail. I think a whale tail would look good on you, what man. What if? What if? Like, oh okay, just God. hypothetical. You're on the beach, okay? We got another topic. No, no, no. <laughs> I want you to defend people with painted nails. This is your time. You have painted but nails. But I said it already. Like the nail art is self-expression. The thong is like, nah, you just like to dress like a woman. But that's for you. I don't like to dress like a woman. Would you get the thong painted on your nails? Would you get whale tails on your nails? <laughs> yeah. Good, good, good. Oh, question. if it look fire, yeah. That's fire. Whale tails on if, your nails? If the art look fire, yeah. I like that. Okay. I was at a Scottish wedding and I was wearing a kilt and this is not going to help my, oh, <laughs> it's not going to help me at all, but I had a long skirt as in uh, Scottish weddings do. And then my nail art matched my kilt. I always felt like if you're going to wear a kilt, and you got to let fire. the ball show a little bit. Did oh, you free I ball? I, I was free balling, yeah. Wow. Really? Yeah. And then one of these white boys tried to lift my shit up. And? Did you yeah. show him that thing? Nah. I mean, he might have saw him, but. <laughs> 
You might as well wait a thumb. <laughs> can you go but, tell that story? Nah, but then he's not going <laughs> to see go, nothing. If you go tell a story about having no drawers on with a, a kilt skirt. and a white boy lifting your shit up, yeah. you might as well just, just, just wear a thong, <laughs> bro. Just wear a thong. But then he's not going to have a show. Is oh. It? <laughs> oh, my God. I have a friend who had a Christmas party, Christmas Eve, every year, and she asked me to make the greens for a party every okay. year. And I am not lying to you that I would make so many greens that I'd need to wash them in the bathtub. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. So how do you make your greens? Do you put turkey in them? Do you bacon. Put nice. I do bacon. bacon. She put garlic. Vinegar. I put white vinegar. Yes. I do. So I start with, I slice up my garlic. Uh -huh. But no, first I fry, chop up the, the, yeah, bacon, the bacon and get all that yeah. fat going. Then I put garlic. Yeah some chili peppers yes. and then a lot of water and yeah. so a little chicken stock and I let it go for a while be before I put the greens in and uh, then right so you get that going and all that flavor and then I put the greens in for a couple hours yeah. then I do vinegar America is never as bad as people make it out to be and the reason I say America is never as bad as people make it out to be, because if that's news, <laughs> bro, <laughs> like, like if that is news, like we might be doing pretty damn good out here. Yep. Know? Agreed. Because that should not be a topic of discussion. Like, why is that a headline? Like, I. I well, because I think the tr the the argument or the trend is like, is she black or they're trying to prove she's black. So now they have her making collard greens. Here's the thing. And the recipe was, yeah. It was mid? Yeah. You see how excited that dude got when she started mad? describing it? Yeah, I didn't even admit about it. What She's was like, about I made nah, mine bacon. You... He goes, yeah. I like mine with turkey. <laughs> yeah, that's a, usually you put like turkey bones and... No, no, yes, no, no. no. That's should... what people who don't eat pork do. Oh. People that eat pork, it's baking the fuck up. I don't know, my grandmother from Atlanta, we ate a lot of pork, but it was always turkey neck. Why is this a thing? This feels like Hillary with the hot sauce again. Why is this a thing? People don't eat hot sauce. People don't use hot sauce. People don't eat collard greens. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. They I mean, like, what's the point? Like, I just don't, I don't, I don't, I just don't get why this is a, a, a thing. Yeah. Why is this a point of debate? Well, I think that there are definitely people targeting her and trying to make her awkward and uncomfortable and leaning into that. And she has awkward and uncomfortable moments, and they're trying to use that to discredit her as a, as a candidate for president. I think awkward and, and uncomfortable is fine. I think the problem with politicians for years is they've all tried to be too perfect, and it's impossible to be that nowadays in 2024. Yeah. The reason it's impossible to be that because the cameras are always on. Yeah. Who is the person? I'm, I'm, I'm not even just talking about politicians. Who is the person that always looks cool in this era? Barack. Get the fuck out of here. Who? Barack. Bro? No. Nah, Jay-Z looks funny on the jet ski. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> on the jet ski, yeah. Who? Maybe it might be Barack. Yeah. He's never not He's cool. super comfortable with it. But you never see Barack in a real moment, though. Yeah, you think it's you all You don't see Barack doing nothing real ever. Yeah, it's all When do you ever see Barack Obama doing anything real? The only reason Jay-Z looks uncomfortable is because we watch him doing things with his kids. Mm. Or he's on vacation with the helmet on and the, 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 the life vest while he's jet skiing or jumping in the pool with Beyonce. He's being a dad. Like, yeah. you know, like, we don't see Barack in real moments. When the last time, when have you ever seen Barack doing something real? He shot the jumper when he left the court. Even that was fake. I don't believe that. That was that. that <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't. I hear what you're saying. It's all curated that. stuff. I don't believe that. With that. No, nah, nah. And also, we make fun of Jay Z for wearing a helmet on a on a jet ski or whatever. But it's like you work your entire life to become this successful person, and then you get thrown all away in some fucking jet ski accident. Like you know I'm wearing saying? a I'm wearing a helmet. What? I'm wearing shoulder pads. I'm doing all the shit. Fuck that. I don't see the problem. But that's my point. Who looks cool in 2024? There's nothing cool about being safe. And I think a lot of times politicians are trying to be safe. <sighs> you know? And I think, like, I think she's going into this, at least it seems, is like, you know, the unveiling of her, the, the media at least made it feel like, oh, my God, it's hers to lose. And then they didn't let her talk for X amount of days. And then she did that interview with Waltz. Dana Bash. Yeah. Dana Bash and Waltz. Yeah. And it... it 
it wasn't received in the best light. It was regular. And it, by the way, but I don't want someone regular to be president. But here's the thing: if she had done more interviews, yeah. that wouldn't even, that interview wouldn't even be a problem. There was nothing wrong with that interview. It's just the fact that you you haven't seen her do interviews for a few, and which is also was weird, right? And this is why I say we grade we grade people on a curve, and there's definitely a double standard between her, between Trump and everybody else, because she did the one thing that nobody wanted to do. Mm. After Joe Biden stunk up the debate, she was on the front lines on everybody's show that night being clean up woman, and everybody gave her the utmost props. So you're trying to tell me that person right there is afraid of doing interviews? I don't I don't know if she is, but I think that her handlers are like, hey, you're in the lead. Doing an interview can only hurt you. This I has never been your though. strong suit. It's never been a thing that made you popular. But why do people say that's not her strong suit, though? I've because, got three great interviews with her. Yeah, but I don't think those interviews made people go, I want her to be president. Like, well, if they did, I, she would have got a vote, a delegate vote. Well, no, I take it back. 2018 was the first time we interviewed her. God, yeah. She wasn't running then. And then 2020, she ran. And then by the time I interviewed her again in 2020, 2022, she was VP. What I'm noticing now is those interviews in particular is what everybody is using. Mm. Like to, to, to find out what she is about. Like I'm like I'm watching all of these different web pages and blog sites and the, uh, what is it, the now that's this and all of that. Like those, they're taking bits and pieces of those interviews and they're pushing those out. That's why I, right. I, I confidently say I feel like we've over the last four or five years, Breakfast Club probably got the best interviews with the vice president. Yeah. You know, before she was even vice president. Yeah. So, to that, I don't even fuck what you were talking about. What were you talking about? I I don't know. <laughs> you talking about something before that. No, no, it was, oh yeah, yeah, why she hasn't done yeah. interviews. And what, oh yeah, what? I don't think, listen, I, don't, I think that when you get put in the position that she was put in. Yeah. Right? Meaning that Joe Biden decides he wants to step down. Well, he finally listened when they pushed him out, right? Can we just acknowledge they pushed him out? Who doesn't know that? Okay. <laughs> Everybody knows so, he got pushed everybody's out. Everybody's like, he's the bravest guy in the world to step down. He didn't even know he stepped down. They wrote a fucking letter. They signed that shit for him. He found out on Twitter like the rest of us. Nobody in the history yeah. of the world has ever stepped down through an open letter when video and Zoom and TV exists. That was fly, though. The fact he stepped out on Twitter yeah. on a Sunday, yeah. that was the youngest shit he did in 50 years. He ain't do it. <laughs> That's why. He was at the beach in Delaware. They walked his ass out to the beach where he had no Wi-Fi, and they fucking sent a resignation letter out there. And then the next day, Kamala is going to be president. And I think that's the thing that, like, I think that's the thing that I imagine conservatives get concerned with, where they're like, oh, wow, Democrats are saying Trump is the end of democracy, yet an effective coup was staged Not really, on the though. Democrat side for president. Well, I, a coup is maybe like a, a word that's a little bit too radioactive. Why but think it, people are forgetting she was the vice president? So let's just say, God forbid, Joe Biden passed away. Hmm. Let's just say Joe Biden got so sick that he couldn't do it anymore. Who would be the president? Sure, but it wasn't up to him. Meaning his choice was removed from him, which is essentially what a coup is. It's now, not, a coup is a big it's, word. It's about what you can prove. <laughs> <laughs> what did they <what> <laughs> say in training day? It's not about what you know. It's yeah. about what you can prove. So you're saying that Kamal's a crooked cop? No, I'm saying that Joe Biden stepped down. That's what we know. Being that he stepped down, the vice president has to step up. How is that not democracy? <laughs> How is that that's the way democracy works? Fuck your conspiracy theories and what y'all, what you want to believe. What we know is the vice president, the, the president put in his resignation letter <laughs> and his second in command. Now I know up. why like white people didn't believe black people when black people said the cops are racist for so long. Why? Because there's just no video of it. So they were like, eh, that's what we can prove. Why well, not? Well, yeah, but then Rodney King came. Exactly. And then you saw it, like, oh, shit. They were like, yeah, he must have done something real bad. That's that the point. Yeah, that's, but that's yeah. the point. <laughs> <laughs> but my whole point is... <laughs> How fast was he going, smoking that weed? My whole point is she's the vice president. That's what happens with a vice president. That's the vice president's job. We know that's what happens. The, but whatever, that's not what we're debating. The coup thing is like, all right, let's look at it from the opposite way. Mm -hmm. He steps down. And I, I happen to do believe he stepped down. I think he stepped down under a ton of pressure. But I think a lot of pressure made the choice. <laughs> it's a lot, <laughs> of pressure, a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure, Chris. But we've seen other people facing pressure and not step down. So I give him credit for that. But okay, yeah. let's say he steps down and they bypass her. 
and they go straight to some sort of open competition at the debate. That's more. That's more. That's more of a coup, right? Because then the narrative coming would immediately be. They skipped over the person. The vice president. Right, right job. Yeah. Uh, they cut her out. No, that's not true at, at all. I think so. No, no, that is not true at all. How is it not true? Being the vice president doesn't automatically make you the nominee. Being the vice president makes you the president oh, if well, the makes president you the nominee steps is, is down. When the delegates vote for you. Exactly. They voted for her. When? At the convention. That's what you think Lil Jon was out there for. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That, no. They, vo they oh, voted no, no. for her oh, when no, there was no. nobody and else to vote for. No, that's not true. Who oh, else was on the ballot? Could have put it, they could have recommended anybody they wanted to, which yeah, I but, didn't know until I had the convention. Those delegates are supposed to represent our votes, and we were stripped the right, the ability to choose a person to be our representative. The delegates could have chosen anybody they wanted. But the delegates... They, the delegates did not have to vote for her. But the delegates could have chosen, but the people didn't get a chance to but choose. But those are the and people. The, the, no, no, no. The delegates are supposed to represent our choice. I don't know about that. But also, no... Well, of course, that's the whole idea of a representative you democracy. You shut down the entire system, then. Because no matter how it's sliced, voters, individual voters still in this system vote for delegates, and then it's up for the delegates to disperse their votes however you want. No. And it usually happens more one-to-one, -one, it's it's up to the delegates to represent our Let choices. Ask. Let me see. But the one thing is, like, no one else ran. Or no one else said, hey, I would like to put Nobody my name her. in a hat. So I it's mean, like, you know, RFK tried to, but they did everything in their power to not let that happen. And thank God. <laughs> oh, y'all your mind. Y'all got to stop with the RFK shit. Why, why, I why? entertained the RFK, but that motherfucker is batshit crazy. Why? What's he doing? And, 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 Martha Moxley. That's and, all you got to do. And, why? Who's that? And I don't respect people like RFK. You don't know? Who's that? 15-year-old girl murdered in the mid-70s in Greenwich, Connecticut. Almost 99.9% .9 by RFK Jr.'s cousin. Hmm. Took forever for them to convict the guy. He finally went to jail 20 years afterwards, and RFK was the one who spearheaded this guy getting out. I mean, it's it's really bad. This is this is good. Listen, in the U.S. political system, delegates at the DNC could theoretically have chosen a different candidate for vice president and Kamala Harris, yes. which several factors made this highly unlikely. The first one is the role of the presidential nominee. Traditionally, the VP candidate is selected by the presidential nominee. In this case, Joe Biden during the 2020 election, once Biden chose Kamala Harris as his running mate, the convention delegates were expected to endorse that choice. Although delegates technically have the power to vote for a different candidate, in modern political practice, they most always follow the presidential presidential nominees lead. Okay, Cor correct me if I'm wrong, right? Let's say, for example, Biden was just going to be a one-term president and he had mentioned this earlier. He should have done that. Which he should have done. What they then would have done is the party would have held an open primary yes. where uh, Kamala could have run and other people could have also run. They compete for our vote. We choose them in a primary system and then those delegates represent our choices. That's how it should have happened. The fact that it didn't happen like that, you can at least empathize and understand with the conservatives when they go, hey, you have stripped down the democratic process while you're saying that Trump is a tyrant, a fascist, and is going to be the end of democracy. No. You can at least empathize with that position. No. No, just because of what, what it says, like, while delegates had the theoretical ability to choose a different candidate, the combination of party norms, the selection process, and the desire for unity made Kamala Harris the clear and expected choice for vice president in 2020. But that's not what I'm saying. I, 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 I could, I could empathize with what you said, but also if Biden would have said, hey, I'm only running for one term, and then I put all my support for Kamala, the... Both parties, they usually follow suit. And the same way what happened just now, no one else would have put their name in the hat and we would have had the same situation. I'll tell you something, it's hard for me to empathize with anybody on the right talking about democracy when Donald Trump constantly wipes his ass with the Constitution. He literally said on Sunday morning, do we have the clip? He literally said, mind you, he just got re-indicted last week. <laughs> for attempting to overthrow the results of an election. And when asked about it on Fox News on Sunday, he said he had every right to interfere with the election. I know, I know how y'all feel about your boy, Trump. It ain't funny no more. 
at this point. Wait, now, let, let now me hear. Now looking like the old man in the club. Now it's like. Hold on, let me hear that. That's fire. <laughs> not, your, not your boy. Can we I, just, I, I don't think, I really believe he doesn't want to run no more. You cannot be saying shit like this if you really want to win. So he says whatever he wants. No, nah, it's different now. It ain't It ain't like it used to be, bro. I, it ain't slap. There was a time it slapped. Now it's just like, what the fuck is he talking about? It's so crazy that my poll numbers go up. Whoever heard you get indicted for interfering with a presidential election when you have every right to do it. <laughs> you get indicted and poll numbers go up. When people get indicted, your poll numbers go down. Bro, we come can on, hear come on, you, come bro. On, come on, come on, come on, come on. We That's, can hear that, you. That was great. We can hear you. Is that that you crazy? You just got reindicted last week. No, what he's saying is the thing that they're accusing him of, he's allowed to do. What, interfere with the election? I guess what he did. He's oh, like, I have every election? right to do it. <laughs> That's illegal. He doesn't have <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> That's how I interpret it. But also, it's illegal, Schultz. But he can do no wrong to me. Right. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, he's the Lord and Savior, Jesus Trump. But so like, there's nothing he can do point. that's wrong. Well, he's, uh, he, I, I can tell you what he's doing wrong. He's not trying to win this election. I really think Trump wants out, bro. Or he's, Trump wants Republicans to do him so, the way the Democrats did Joe Biden. <laughs> Please put me out of my misery. What about this theory? That he doesn't want to at, be out. He wants to win, but he's trying to signal to the powers that be that he's willing to play ball. Cut me a little deal. That's it. Just tell me I'm not going to no, jail. No, 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 no. He, he still wants to win, but he's going... Hey guys, I just want to let you know, I'm not draining the swamp. I'm cool to, to run the country how you guys run it. I know you guys usually pick both parties, the Republican and Democrat, and let the American people have a pretend election where they think they decide. And I'm the outsider and I fuck shit up and I scared everybody and made you guys feel like you weren't gonna make billions of dollars sucking on the teeth of the American government. I just want to let you guys know, you tried to kill me, my bad. I'm not talking shit no more. <laughs> nah, Y'all can get all nah. the money you want. From day one. Say again? No. Nah. Who, who he's been. No, he's been, I'm going to drain the swamp. Nah, it was a bunch of talk. The guy. That was 2016 swamp. talk. He is the swamp. What are you yeah, that was 2016 talk. Okay, okay. This is, this is why political discourse is so difficult. Not here. It's funny. My, my point. <laughs> my point is. My point is. I'm addressing the energy shift that Charlemagne feels that I've felt that I think that all of us have felt yeah. from him, and I wonder if that energy shift, where he's specifically saying things like, you know, we could have done horrible things to Hillary Clinton, but we chose not to. That doesn't look right. You can't do that. That's to, not uh, the energy shift, though. The energy shift is. He's really saying shit that don't even make sense at this point. Like that right there is an admission of guilt. You just got reindicted a week prior, I, literally for overthrowing the results the of an fact, election. The fact that he's like complimenting this Secret Service nonstop after they let him someone shoot him, like to me, that is he's echoing the sentiments, hey. I'm on your team now. I'm not going to shake shit up. Let me go in this, and you guys can keep on making money. All you don't know who the enemy is. All you don't know who the enemy is. You don't know who's trying to get you. So, so you're, you're like, being nice to everybody. I'm, I got to be nice. I'm playing ball. And also, there isn't one enemy. Everybody acts like, oh, only the CIA does this. It's a bunch of different entities that all make money off of America, and they need certain people in office to keep on making money. It's not that well, crazy. Well, I think, I think it, one reason I think it's, it's pretty much... Or another reason I think he wants to step down, he don't have this. When you, if you watch Fox News, most of these Republicans are challenging him. Yeah, they're like, bro, cut out the dumb shit. Yeah, <laughs> they're literally like, just act normal. Bro. Just act normal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Doing, just talk about fucking policy. Yeah, all this other shit you're doing is fucking us up. Yeah, just act normal. Yeah, the fact that they're calling him out like that and not trying to act like what he's doing is normal lets me know it's over. Hmm. Not now, 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 now. You still got to go out there and vote in November. I don't know who's going. I really don't know who's going to win in November. If you'd have asked me, you know, four or five months ago, could Biden win? I would have said absolutely Hell not. No. If you say with the vice president, I say I don't know. I hope so. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't. It's like it's, the polls even show that right now. It's a fifty-fifty. Some polls got her up. Some polls got it tied. I don't know. That's all. That's the best case scenario for November. I think she's got to avoid that debate. I think she should. I She's think she should do. Dog. You know who should avoid the debate? Who? Trump. No. You're crazy. No, no, no. He no. can't win, Schultz. If she, whenever she talks, her poll numbers go down. It's when, not true. No, no. Sorry. Whenever she talks in an unscripted environment, the poll numbers go down. When she gave that speech at the DNC, I thought it was good. I thought she did a good job. Yeah, but great, that great speech. speech. Yeah. 
Uh, great, I wouldn't say. Barack Obama. She went up gave... four points after the CNN interview. Yeah, yeah, but uh, four <laughs> points on what polls? The national poll, and and in the conservative poll. Look it up. For me, the the trend of Kamala right after the interview came out with Waltz start had had peaked and has already started to come down. Let me tell you why Schultz is the best. Yeah, he said for me. <laughs> so, 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 so even if you come at him with his eye, this is me. That's this all is what I believe. Yo, yo, so. Okay. <laughs> I was talking to them. Yo, 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 yo. I was, I was talking to Are we on a podcast or not? Are we on a podcast or not? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, absolutely. I was talking to, I was actually talking to the boys about this on Flagrant, but I've been thinking about this a lot. Okay. You know how, like, um, everybody's calling for, like, the government to censor social media, and there's so many fucked up things happening on X or Instagram or Facebook, and the government needs to come in and censor social media. And, like, it kind of has happened, but then it kind of hasn't happened, and it's a, it's a weird, like, amorphous thing where you don't even know what the decisions are. I think that it is in the government... If the government wants control, right? Let's just assume they do want control. Just go with me there. It is in the best interest of the government not to censor social media, but to be able to have certain control of it. For example, no, 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 not even regulation. This is the beautiful thing about it. Back in the day, in order to like get Charlemagne the God to like, you know what people always accuse you? Oh, you're a DNC shill. Somebody from the government came to Charlemagne and they threatened him and his family. So he goes and says this shit, right? That's what you had to do back in the day. Why would they think I would keep that to myself? Exactly. Yeah, it, but Most it doesn't matter. Most fire episode of Brilliant Idiots ever. 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 Okay. So, I, <laughs> but I got, I got something even better. I got something even better. Back in the day, they would have to do that too to me. Back in the day, they'd have to do that too. I mean, we're making ourselves really important. Like you are way more involved in this, but it doesn't matter. They would have to do that. They'd have to leverage something over you. They'd be like, "Hey, we have you stealing this information right here. We're going to put it out unless you, you do our bidding." Exactly. We got yeah. your PT. That was, yeah. that was exactly yes. Right. And this has been happening for years. Right. So you have to have some leverage over somebody and then tell them something that they don't really believe. And then they're going to go tell their constituents, they're going to tell the world that even though they don't believe it, so that they don't lose their career, their well-being, their life. That was back in the day, right? Now with social media, right? Think about it. You could curate somebody's opinion by curating their timeline. A hundred percent. Okay. So Charlemagne the God, you are this liberal guy, right? And everybody's like, you're a DNC shill. You're the person that's saying and echoing all their sentiments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe that's because the powers that be have made sure your entire feed is just Trump is an enemy of the state. Trump is going to do the 2025 project or whatever it is. Trump is going to do this. Maybe... You're, nobody has leverage over you. Maybe they've curated all the information that you are digesting to convince you of this theory position, and now you are authentically sharing that with the world. If I'm a government, one, I want TikTok out of here because I can't do that on TikTok. China could do that. China could feed me all the shit that they want me to say on this podcast. They could feed you all the shit or somebody could feed you all the shit that they want you to say. Mm -hmm. But you are authentically saying it. it's brainwashing. It's almost like what the education process was for kids. The government has to come together and be like, hey, what's history? What's World War I? What's World War II? More or less, what happened with Christopher Columbus? Let's give it all to them and they're going to digest it and that's what kids are going to think the world is. I think you're absolutely right. But I was, Isn't that crazy? No, you're absolutely like, right. But his, more likely but, for individuals than a celebrity or an influencer. Well, listen, Schultz is absolutely I, right. I, but here's the For thing. me, I would definitely go to people with huge platforms and a lot of influence and then fill their feed with whatever I wanted them to think. If I wanted them to be scared of immigration, I would show them nonstop immigrants stabbing people, yeah, but, taking over shit. So then all of a sudden you go on a pod or you go on the radio, not saying you're doing no, this, no. but you go on your platforms and you go, man, this immigration shit is wild. Have you seen all these videos? Schultz, Schultz is right, but it works the other way too. Keep going. Meaning that all of these QAnon people, these far right people, they, they, they get fed conspiracy theories about the other side. That's what's happening on both sides. Oh, no. Okay, well, now we have to extrapolate even more. If you're a foreign country, you're an enemy of the United States Absolutely. of America. Absolutely. And think about it. You don't even, just let me put this out. I'm talking as if there's like some high level uh, enterprise that is working cahoots with Meta to do this, right? I could do this with paid ads. 
I could put paid ads behind a fucking uh, anti-immigration thing and make sure you see it and you see it and you see it. So like on the most basic level, we can get anybody to see anything we want. You're crazy to think Russia's not doing that. They are. China's not doing it. Bro, they and got what, Psy, that's what Psy, I know. I know people who work in PSYOPs. Straight up. I know people who work in psychological operations for the government. And they tell me all the time, not only does America do it, Russia does it, China does it, North Korea, North Korea so does it, everybody does here's it. Here's my question. If we know that they are doing it and we can't find a way to restrict it, because they're not doing it from Russia, they're smart. They have people here that are doing it. Allowing any piece of information out there is allowing China or Russia to sow division within our country. But that's why they want regulation. Under the protection of free speech, which is what I'm trying to say is it's not actually free speech. It is espionage. But that's the thing with that's the thing with the Mark Zuckerberg thing. And that's what the that is the piece that I don't think that they that they put out there. When the Biden administration went to Mark Zuckerberg and said, hey, there's a lot of things being put on your platform that's not true. Yeah. They didn't tell him to censor it. They just said, well, he said they said told him to censor it, but they still left it up to him. Yeah. So they just told him, like, hey, there's a lot of fucked up shit on the platform, whatever, whatever. You should try to regulate this in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. I think the piece that they didn't tell us, they knew it was foreign countries. They knew it was other countries. That's just that's putting out that information. Why wouldn't you? I bet you they told Mark that though. Huh? I said, why wouldn't you if you were Russia? No, you or should. China? You absolutely should. Yes. And I'm sure we're doing that there, but actually we can't because they restrict our social media. There's none of our social media in face in uh, in Russia. None of our social media in China. So, uh, so we can't the way as the CIA effectively used to do it before social media was through movies and entertainment. Yeah, still do that. And so they still just not do as that. effective. It's not as effective. Real life is way more popping. Yes, it is. Real life is way more scary. And all you have to do is take the videos that exemplify the positions you want the people to feel and absorb and take, and then you boost the fuck out of them. And we already know that these platforms can boost. So it, to me, it's like social media is this tool that can be used against us. As much as I love social media, how it's, can we protect happening. for it? What the fuck? Yeah. What? Shows, where have you been? No, no, I, I, actually, there's a term I what, what I'm saying is, here. sorry, sorry, real quick. I knew that this was happening on a, on a macro level, right? Like I knew that like Russia was using it for, um, uh, what's it called? Influence for, uh, election influence, sure. et cetera. I knew this happened. What I didn't realize is that instead of letting it happen on a macro level, if you targeted specific individual people, let's say they targeted, and I'm over, uh, ooh, ooh, well, stop, stop, stop. Yeah. What you're saying is absolutely right, but look at it on, on, on this way too. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Don't just target people to spread the information, target one or two people to spread information about. I don't know if you saw that article, remember that article that came out in NBC News, Chris, where they were talking about how certain black celebrities were yeah. being targeted by people on YouTube? Because if you do that, right, Imagine a hundred different YouTube pages talking about one person. It feels like news. It feels like news and it feels like the truth. That's actually... So now, now, I'm, now I'm gonna... There's, there's one step... There's a PSYOP term for what you're describing. It's yeah, called it's getting the, a train uh, ran on you by no, YouTube. No, it's, uh, it's called the horseshoe. Where you, you picture a horseshoe, right? Yeah. Two equal points across from each other. Mm. And you start a celebrity off at one position... Now, if they just went to the opposite end, it would be too quick. It would be too obvious. So you got to take them on the you journey. You go slowly over the course of several months God, around dude. this way, and then you wind up at the opposite pole. And it's the horseshoe maneuver. And that's that's kind of like the... That's the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, I, well, here's the thing. I, I, so let's say, for example, you take a list of influential celebrities. Uh, it, 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 let's say you. Mm -hmm. um, who else is hugely influential? Rogan. Who else is hugely influential? I don't know. Elon, I don't know. Elon Musk. Yeah. Keep going. Uh, Jeff Bezos. Like, you take all these people, right? And let's say when they're just looking at social media, instead of targeting, instead of targeting all their fans and all their people, mm -hmm. you could target, let me see this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they yes. did a study. That was NBC News. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to get to this in one second. Yeah. You could, you could, if you just made sure that their feeds had a little bit more than the average information that was pro-Israel or pro-Hamas. If you had a little bit more of the average information that was anti-Russia or pro-Russia, right? What they might end up doing is thinking 
thinking that these things are real, this is the right position, and then they might disseminate that information themselves. Now, you don't have to influence the masses. You could get the influencers to influence the masses. And that's what they're doing. Instead of, hey, we set you up with a prostitute, we have pictures, you gotta that's do done. this. We're it's just gonna subtly give it to you. And now you're going to do our work, and we're not even going to have to go Chris, through Chris, you, okay, you don't even need the pictures with the prostitutes anymore. No, that's what I was saying. You oh, you just convince, need the rumor of it. You, no, 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 no. I, you don't even need that. You could literally just feed information to people, and then they'll start to believe it. If you guys are disciplined in the things that you believe, even though we might disagree on certain things, you'll actually read articles, you actually digest information. We know Rogan is very disciplined in the things he believes as well. But I'm sure that there are plenty of people out there who are influential that are just going to be regurgitating the things that they see. And that, those are the people that are most susceptible and their followers are susceptible to them as well. Now, here's the crazy thing. You've spoken about bots, right? That's right. Now, you believe that bots are real? Absolutely. Okay. I know they are. You know they're real. We did a whole thing on it. We did, did a whole a, thing. We did, a, we did an autopsy. You did an autopsy because the bots are real. Not yeah. only are bots real, YouTube accounts are real. Absolutely. Bot YouTube accounts. Absolutely. Okay. You can make comments through these bots, right? Yep. You can inundate YouTube with these comments that can curate narratives and make it look like that is what the people are thinking. 100%. When in reality, it is all bots. You can also make the creators think that that is what the people want, that is what the people like, that is what the people don't want, that's what the people dislike. This is all facts. And you can manipulate the creators into creating what you want through bot warfare. How many of these views that they're getting are bots? Oh, a lot. They don't know that. Now they're creating things for these views that aren't even real. Now you've convinced a creator to make videos reacting to or just curating shit out of nowhere for certain narratives that are only bot supported. I swear I'm trying to find this article, man. It was an article that NBC News did that literally showed how these people these fake YouTube pages, whatever you want to call them, bots, whatever else, they're, they're, they're creating these pages to just attack people. And these pages get millions and millions and millions of views. And then it views. feels as if the attack is real. And then the real people that watch it go, oh, wow, this is the trend. This is what is actually happening right now. There was a song that, uh, Try That in a Small Town. Remember that song? It was a country song? Okay. I clicked on the video. And, and I don't know if this is true, if this is proof of this, but I just, I clicked on the video and I saw that all the comments were very similar when I was looking at it. This might have changed now. But they were these YouTube accounts that were very similar. It was like a name and then four numbers. And I'm like, okay, that might just be like the auto-generated YouTube account. It doesn't right. have to be real. But they all had the similar narrative, which is, I'm a Latina lady and I agree with this sentiment. They were all defending. They were an immigrant person because he was talking about like certain behavior. I think it was from immigrants or from like... I think, was it from immigrants specifically or from it's inner like, city people that it's, were? It's like, um, I wouldn't allow this in my town. And it was had innuendos like, if, we're you fighting are, back. if you're an outsider, we don't fuck. Exactly, yeah. right? And it was all non-white people in the comments like, I support this. We shouldn't allow this behavior. This behavior is awful. So... But didn't he have like the KKK in the video and wasn't he waving like a... No, but... but Confederate flag and... Doesn't matter. The point is that... It doesn't matter. <laughs> Meaning, it, that I'm doesn't... I'm fucking with you. I, no, I made this all up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see how far I didn't even want to go to defend the party. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way that shit was it. <laughs> but but the, point, the point being is that you could curate the narrative to the video. Like, if everybody's going, this video's racist and this video's fucked up and this video's anti-minority, anti-immigrant... But if you look at the comment section and it's all immigrants going, I support this video and this sentiment, now you're thwarting the narrative that the video is putting out there into the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. What would be promoting? The uh, recording company, the, uh, the record label. This is what I'm saying. NBC News, look, this is the headline. I told everybody to go read this a long time ago. This came out back in fucking January of 2024. Fake news YouTube creators target black celebrities with AI-generated misinformation. Yep. Some channels 
And, these, and by the way, these channels used to do this with tech reviews. So some channels pivoted from tech review videos, the misinformation about black celebrities bringing in millions of views. So these same channels used to do tech reviews, oh, shitting on- They're agnostic. Shitting the, on tech, the, then they switched to black celebrities. Because there was more views. That's right. So these are the same fucking channels that they'll use to target politicians, uh, uh, celebrities, any misinformation they want to spread, they'll do it on these YouTube channels. Motherfuckers watch these shit with millions of views, think it's real. Like, they'll even use pictures. They'll have still shots of, like, Diddy in handcuffs. <laughs> and they'll be like, Diddy's house, you know, just, well, your house really big. <laughs> but, 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 but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It'll be information like that. Like the, like, the most wildest, fakest shit. Everybody should go read this article. The moral of the story is what we're trying to tell you is don't believe shit you see on the goddamn internet. I'm, I'm not even joking when I tell you this. Do not believe shit you see on the motherfucking internet because all of us are guilty of spreading misinformation in some way, shape, or form. The reason that I like to watch all news channels is because I like to see what everybody is talking about. But that's hard for a lot of people, especially when we don't, most people don't even have TVs. Most people, they just have their phones. That's a good point. If that's, that's the information that's source. Yeah, if that's the information. If you, you, we fucked then. It's a dangerous yeah. place. <laughs> you know it's a saying? dangerous place we're living in, ladies and gentlemen. We're fucked. We're fucked. Yeah. We're fucked. Let's pay some bills, Chris. Let's do it. Are we fucked, though? Yeah. We're fucked. We might come back from it, but we're fucked. You think we fuck fucked? Yeah. For a while. I don't know if we fuck fucked, man. I think that people are starting to come back to the realization of just like what's of what can remotely be true, as opposed to just believing anything. I think you're fucked for people that don't fuck with you. What you mean? If people are already committed to misunderstanding you, there's nothing you're, you're gonna be able to do to get them to ever see the truth of you. And, 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 and I think it's even worse when you are a successful person. Let me tell you something. They will never see the truth for you. There are certain people that will never see the truth for you, but... The second you say something that supports their argument, oh, you the oh my god, they, oh. You, you, they do that to me every day, all the time. I don't never agree with Charlemagne, but he right about this today. I don't never agree with Charlemagne, but he right about this. Like how many times are y'all gonna say this? And it shows you that most people who are popular or influential, or whatever, most people are not. They're just tools for your opinions or emotions. That's right. And the second those people veer off. This is a horrible example. Let me, can I just make a horrible example? I love when you make horrible examples. Okay. Kanye is, is, a, is a perfect example of this. Kanye has actual fans. Yes. Because he went out there and he said the most heinous, fucked up shit. And people maybe didn't start believing it, but they were like, I fucking love Kanye. I think Drake I, is a better example. Or, or, because it was easy. Make the Drake argument. It was easy to get cut. Like Kanye was out there saying anti-Semitic stuff. We know there's people out there that's anti-Semitic. No, no, so I, it's I, easy to get people on your side. with Oh that. no, I'm not talking about the new people that he got. I'm talking about there are people that fuck with him forever, and then he started doing that, and then they were like, you know, he's a troubled, fucked up guy. But I do believe in him as an artist. And I believe in him as a musician. I don't like those views, but I still fuck with like what he's done. Yeah, to yeah, me, yeah. that shows, oh wow, you actually really cared for this person and how he made you feel with his art at one time. You don't necessarily like those views, but there are other people that you know. The second they stop, any of these like CNN pundits, if they decide to be Republican. They're dead to their constituents in a heartbeat. They bullet in your head. Oh, they can go to dead. Fox. No, no, no. To their fans, their Fox fans might oh, yeah, go, "Oh, you're great," but their other fans, you're a puppet for the. You're a puppet for your I constituents. Have to say this. Yeah, I'm, nah. I'm, I'm, nobody even listen to me unless I'm saying what you want me to say. Now, what was the Drake thing that you were gonna say? I was just gonna say Drake is a good example of that now because everybody acts like they hate Drake now, but everybody knows Drake has actual fans. It's just that the. Kendrick did a number on him, right? And, and the <laughs> anti-Drake stuff is really loud, and people have and it, confidence. It's fun. It gets you views and shit now. Yes, it's fun. It's fun. That's all. I want to come back to that point after we pay these bills. Go, 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 go. Uh, what are the chomps? Back to school means back to busy schedules. Chomps are the perfect on-the-go snack that you can always fit into the busiest of schedules. Whether that's between classes, on the way to practice, or a much-needed protein pick-me-up for parents in the pickup lane. Chomps has the protein your body needs and the flavors you crave. Now, I want you to answer this question. How do chomps fit into your busy back-to-school schedule? 
Easy. My, my kids need snacks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we're always looking for healthy snacks that don't compromise on taste. So here goes Chomps, okay? Chomps meat snacks have up to 12 grams of protein, zero grams of sugar, and are made with only real ingredients. Finally, a snack that fills you up that's made of ingredients you can feel good about. Chomps comes in about 10 delicious flavors, so there's something for everyone. They're made with only the highest quality protein like grass-fed and finished beef and antibiotic-free turkey. The only tough choice is what flavor to try first. Right now, Chomps is offering 10% off your first order when you sign up to their email list by going to chomps.com slash idiots. Go to chomps.com slash idiots to see all the delicious flavors and get 10% off your first order when you sign up to their email list. That's chomps, C H. O-M-P-S dot com slash idiots. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. Let's do some church announcements, Schultzy. Let's do it. What uh, you got coming up? Man, the movie that I did that I got that horrible haircut for, The Thicket, starring hmm. uh, Peter Dinklage and Julia Lewis, uh, is coming out uh, this Friday. It's the in the city. Yeah, yeah, it's at the Angelica in the city. It's you know, which is pretty cool, man. And uh, yeah, so I'm in a few scenes there, and uh, Dope. yeah, people seem to be really enjoying it. The guy who made Game of Thrones went out to the premiere. That's pretty cool. He was hyped on it. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully, it does great. Shout out to everybody involved. Shout out to Elliot Lester for directing it and just having me be a part of it. Shout out to Dinklage, obviously. And uh, yeah, it was cool. Yes. And then the Life Tour. Hollywood has it. Yes, sir. Uh, the Life Tour, man. The last shows of the Life Tour uh, are up. They're on sale right now. We added a bunch of uh, cities, a bunch of shows in different cities, so you guys can go grab those. We'll be in uh, San Antonio. We had a second show in San Antonio. We're going to be in Vegas. We got Columbus. We got Cleveland, Milwaukee. Um, we got Minneapolis. Uh, added third show in Denver, second show in Cincinnati, second show in Reno. Um, and also Hawaii. I might be forgetting a few cities, but uh, oh, uh, we're going to be Portland. We had a second show in San Jose as well. Go grab those tickets, theandrewshows.com. And, uh, and yeah, man, thank you guys so much for all the support during all this, man. Really appreciate yes, it. Yes, sir. Uh, make sure to go get my new book, Get Honest to Die Lying, Why Small Talk Sucks, available everywhere you buy books now in New Orleans. Uh, September 20th, 7.30 p.m., I will be at Baldwin and Company um, signing copies of my new book, Get Honest or Die Lying. Baldwin and Company in New Orleans, uh, September 20th, 7.30 p.m. For details, go to CTGB co.eventbrite.com in Philly. I'll be in Philly uh, next uh, on the 11th. Uh, my guy Wallow, man. Wallow's first book comes out. Wallow's book is called the, the Armed with Good Intentions. And I will be with Wallow uh, at Uncle Bobby's bookstore at the Green Street Friends School in Philadelphia at 7 p.m. on Wednesday the 11th. I'm looking at Eventbrite right now. It says tickets going fast. So make sure you get tickets for that. Come out, support Wallow, man, as we discuss his new book, Armed with Good Intentions. I love it. Um, What I want... Oh, we were talking about... Uh, oh, social media, right? And how there are... There, there is these campaigns... So you'll see these campaigns, these camp whether they're at whether they're at Trump, whether they're at the vice president, whether they're at shows, whether they're at me, right? The only time you know that these campaigns are fake is when you're really outside. Remember we were talking about earlier, we were talking about the bookstore and the book promo book oh, promo yeah. stuff like that. You never and hear none of that. You, you'll have, you'll literally have hundreds of YouTube videos talking about this person fell off and that person fell off. And, it, oh. and these are the people that's actually. Moving shit. In Do you know how many videos I've seen about Joe Rogan falling off? Bro. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's the number one podcast in the world. Yeah. What are we doing? They're all such hacks, dude. It's just like, and they all copy each other. They just find something that works within the title, and then the other ones see that that worked for them, so then they do the exact same title. But what are they basing this off? Their feelings? No, it's just views. It's like, once somebody's very popular, especially like in the YouTube space, you just get a lot of clicks off their name, yeah. and then saying something horrible about them is going to induce clicks in the name. And they are powerful, though. They can, like, set narratives that aren't true. They, like, make them up out of thin air, and they just push them out there, and people will click on them, and they'll get views. And the more views, the more people make those types of videos. I had, I had somebody make a dad that, like, my career was over while I was literally at the peak of my career. Bro. 
Like I was doing you arenas. Arenas. I be wondering, let me, how do I, I be trying to make burnout accounts? <laughs> I be, like, straight up. I'm doing I arenas like, in Australia. I, you know, I almost. It, it, I dreamed to yo, fall off at this fall. Fuck the burnout accounts. I be about to get under there under, as radio face. I'm like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? Yeah. Like, th that's the shit that doesn't make any sense to me. But then I realized something, right? And I realized it when I see people talking about. Uh, the podcasters that have done these big deals recently. Oh, yeah. You know the list I'm always, talking about. Who, yeah, yeah. Who, 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 who's the list? We had, I just had the list. Who's the list up? Ooh, Alex Cooper. Yeah. Who is it? Kelsey. Dax, Cooper. Kelsey. Yes, it's a, it's a top, okay, here, yeah, it's a top five. Recent major podcast deals. Boardroom put this out. Joe Rogan, Spotify, 250 million. Alex Cooper, Sirius XM, 125 million. Smartlist, 100 million. Kelsey Brothers, Amazon, 100 million. Dax Shepard, 80 million. And what happens is these will get posted and then literally you'll see like black Twitter, black social media go crazy. And they're like, who the fuck are these people? And we don't know any of these individuals and how the fuck they got this money over this person and that person. And I'm like, this isn't a race thing. Yeah. It's a metrics thing. Yeah. If I simply showed you the numbers, if I simply showed you how much your favorite podcast that you see probably go viral all of the time and yeah. you your algorithm is always filled with their shit if i showed you their numbers mm -hmm. compared to joe rogan yeah, or alex the, cooper yeah or dak shepherd you'd be like oh shit man what am i yeah. talking about i didn't know the disparity was this fucking great and i'm talking about like bro i'm not even talking about like a couple million. i'm talking about Tens of millions difference yeah. in, in what you what goes viral all the time and what we see on these blogs all the time as opposed to what's really moving out here. Yeah. So my point with all of that is, what do you, wh where do you get this shit from? Like, do we actually look at real analytics or do no. we just go off vibes? We should go off of vibes, emotion, what we feel. <laughs> How can I satisfy yeah. how I feel? I'm yeah. not getting that deal, so fuck it, it's racism. Fuck you, yeah, it's racism. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, and it's not just them. It's just, that's just how the game works. Yeah, I, listen, I got, here's the thing, man. I, I, this is my mindset. I've always been like this. If there's something that I can actually go look up yeah. to show me that it's something other than an ism, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go look it up. Yeah. Being that I'm a, a podcast executive, I see a lot of these numbers. Yeah. I'm just simply saying I know it's not close. And, and, and that's why you can't even call it racism because there's not even a there's not even a black or brown equivalent to the Joe Rogans, to yeah. Alex Coopers. But like the, it's not even it's those, not those purchases are gonna come for for everybody because I mean we were talking about this a little bit before, but like I think I think what's happening in podcasting right now is what happened to magazines, mm. where magazines started out pretty broad, and then they got hyper specific. Christian Bash Bass Fisherman Magazine, uh, Gay Climbing Magazine, whatever they got. What are you climbing? You know exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not. <laughs> Come on now. That was good. good. That was good. Come on. <laughs> it's, it's not offensive if it's funny. Don't it's, the rule. That's, if it's a joke, we have to leave it in. <laughs> so, so, and I think that's what's happened with podcasting is that like the pod, podcast, I think overall numbers will continue to grow. It'll just be like the thing that people consume. It's just part of everybody's life. But the podcast numbers for shows probably will shrink because there's so many hyper-specific things you can listen to. This is my basketball, like nuanced basketball science podcast that I listen with JJ and LeBron. Here's my funny basketball pod I listen from Barstool. Here's and my- And both of them might be getting a million listens an episode. Or they're getting- 250,000 each. Great. But, which is awesome. Now, here's the thing. What I think, the reason why there's all these purchases for podcasts right now is because I think the podcast production companies or the, the iHeart Medias have realized the numbers are going to shrink overall. So we need more podcast total to generate the revenue that we want to make. And 
the cost for our advertising units, because these places are really advertising agencies, right? Like the Wondries, the Sirius XMs, the Hard Medias, what they are is an advertising arm that is gonna service the podcast. They go, hey, here's your $20 million, and then we're gonna advertise against that and try to beat that 20 million we're paying you. That's the, that's the idea. Okay. Now, the cost to find advertisers for two podcasts to three is nominal. Nah, you gotta have that. No, you gotta have that. You gotta have that network. Me, what, yeah. I'm, what I'm You're saying right. is, right. what I'm saying is, the difference from from for finding advertisers for two podcasts to three or two to ten is very different. You Unless might, you're Rogan. No, or Alex Cooper. Or, Ro yeah, yeah. Rogans are anomalies. Those anomalies are different. But, yeah, but yeah, even yeah. then, but even then, I would say it's even easier to find them advertisers because they're in they're such so demand. Yeah yeah, 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 absolutely. But so so they're looking at the model, they're going, hold on, if I have my advertising team that's already built in place, if I have 50 podcasts or 100 and I don't need to hire any more advertisers, I might as well have 100 and then each of them is making 100,000 views or 200,000 views. That's actually better than just having three. And I think that's why you're seeing this buying spree happen again. And, I thought, and by the way, they're buying companies. That's the other thing people yeah, realize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex Cooper did not just sell as caller daddy. She sold she her network. A network. Yeah, yeah. You know, Dak Shepard is developing a network with Wondery. Smartless. Uh, Smartless is a network. And you know that just saying? goes back to what we're saying. Rogan like, is just the anomaly. He's the, yeah. He's he's the like, anomaly. Stop comparing yourself to Joe yeah, Rogan, please. Yeah, it's, it's a difference. You black, can't, white, stop. Asian, stop. It's just, terrestrial. A, Everybody stop comparing yourself to Rogan. It's just a Rogan. generational thing that happened. It's you never going to, yeah. It's we're never going to see it again in our lifetime. Yeah. This it's is, just not happening. Biggest podcast by far. And I'm going to tell y'all something else that y'all may not um, know. The podcast audience, and Chris, you know this is very white. 60% of the podcast audience are white people. Yeah. it's 14% are black people. It's the makeup of America. Everybody else is others. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just a fact. So if you have a, a podcast audience that's very white, who do you think they're going to be listening to? Yeah. <laughs> like, they're going to listen to things they can relate to. That's why Alice Cooper kills. You know, poke hole in this, but it's it feels just like what happened with TV. So TV individual networks were having tough times doing ad sales. And then the streaming era came where, hey, if we group up a couple of networks, I can throw these all on Hulu and we could start making more money because we package it all Go as back a before deal. that. Go back before that. You don't even have to look at it like that. You could look at it like... Uh, the, the, like MTV was owned by Viacom. Viacom had Comedy Central. Country all, Music Television, country, BET, VH1, all of this. So I don't know if there was one advertising unit for Viacom. I imagine MTV had its own and they had their own. But they all come back to this mother that is Viacom. So hypothetically, you could advertise across Viacom if you wanted and leverage those relationships across the entirety of it. Which people I, do. Which I imagine also iHeart does even with radio. It's like, okay, I want to advertise on The Breakfast Club. Then iHeart goes, okay, we'll give you The Breakfast Club, but... You also got to take this midnight slot as yeah. well if you want the primetime slot. I, I imagine this is how it works, right? To a certain extent? I don't know if I want to tell how the fucking sausage is. <laughs> I think that's how it just, all right, let, let's not use you. But in TV, it goes, we're going to give you the number one show, but I'm also going to need you to take some of these Well, no, shows. It, depend, it depends, right? Because, like, uh, in, in day parts, certain shows just command more. So it's like, you know, like... Those big Fortune 500 companies like, no, we're spending this amount on Breakfast Club. Yeah. This is what we want. This is the talent we want doing yeah. it. You know, it's a little, 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 little different. Just a little bit. Sure. But I feel like with TV, yeah. so the numbers hasn't gone up in TV. Like, I feel the people who watch TV. That happens, that's though. Just... That happen I saw that happen at Viacom. What I'm saying. Yes. Uh, yeah. And I feel like that's what's happening now with podcasts. Like, I think we've reached the zenith in terms of the amount of people who are are what? into podcasts, are going to watch podcasts. No, we don't know. And no, no. The fact is we don't know. Al, Al, I'll be honest with you. No, I, the audience is growing. I don't even think it's close. I, I think that, I think we will double. Really? Yeah, but what will happen is... It will be dispersed. It will just be dispersed. So it yeah. will, the illusion will be, oh, it's not as many people watching anymore. But the reality will be they are watching so many different things right. that now it's becoming hyper. Whereas TV, oh, yeah. viewing hours on, on streaming have gone way up, way up. Like everybody's just streaming. Oh, I was talking about just like, like 
regular cable television. Oh, well, that's a different yeah. anomaly because people are not watching cable anymore. Yeah, right. and so now we're seeing people go from cable to the streamers. Yes. So that's why those numbers are going up. Yeah. I'm talking about in podcasting. I don't think, I think there are certain people that just like to listen and we've exhausted that amount of people. Maybe it might go up in terms of people going from radio to podcast. But like, I have a group of friends that they just don't watch podcasts. They will never watch podcasts. It's just not their thing. And I think okay. it's I think it's just the same thing like TV. There's some TV the people. What audiences were what? Oh, I have no idea. 464 million podcast listeners projected to reach over a half a billion this year. Yeah, I think we're at a billion in like five years. Hmm. Maybe less. Like... I just think podcasting becomes so ubiquitous that it is just like, for example, if you want to learn about um, microprocessing chips, there's just a podcast about it. Yeah. That's right. Like it, it will just, that's right. it's every, just niche. It's it, niche. It, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's niche. But that's the beauty of it. That's awesome. Way, that's what TV was. Yeah. I can go to Discovery Channel. I can go watch National Geographic. I can, I can go watch CNN. I can go watch ESPN. Build a House Channel. That's There's right. There's a food that, channel. Like, absolutely. And those channels weren't doing crazy views, but what they did is they found a way to maximize that ad rev across all the views. So what the the what MTV did that was really smart is instead of having a, a celebrity or whatever or like a, a famous actor for one show, they had... So I, I hate the term celebrity. They had uh, talent yeah. for the network. So Charlemagne and I were network talent, yep. meaning they put us across all the shows. Yep. So now you have four different shows that Charlemagne and I are both on, and the same audience is watching all these different shows, but you only got to pay us once. Oh, wow. Right? Oh, so Until you get too big. And then you get too big, and then it's a different and thing. And then when the contract is up, you renegotiate. Yes. <laughs> but the idea of that, I think, is quite interesting, where you're going, you're essentially going, okay, we can't afford to have a different superstar on every single show we have. That's we right. just don't have that money. That's but right. what we can do is find some talent that can go on four or five different shows and then monetize that way. Gotcha. That's right. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it's I don't want to talk more about my business. It's great Sorry. for podcast. It's great for podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I, I think the main point being is is uh, podcasting is growing. Podcasting is growing. There might you might see this illusion of numbers going down, but the total numbers are going up, gotcha. and people just have to find different ways to monetize their viewership. That's right. But podcasting as a whole is just here to stay, and it is. And there's yeah. no black podcasts that are uh, doing the numbers as the Joe Rogans and the Alex Coopers. Not yet, anyway. I'm not saying that it won't be eventually, but yeah. right now, it's just simply not. Yeah. It's just a numbers game. So when you look at these numbers and y'all see these tens of millions of dollars getting thrown around, trust and believe. It's, and don't get me wrong, these numbers are inflated a little bit too. Yeah, Noah it's not real. On uh, Spotify. I don't know how Trevor does, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know how Trevor does. But I mean, even, even when you look at the top 10 most listened to podcasts, there's nobody black. Breakfast Club does 15 to 20 million downloads a month as a podcast. Well, that's the biggest black podcast. Though. But we're not in the we're still not in the top 10 of with the Jay Shetties and everybody. So my point is like just imagine the numbers that those people are doing. By the way, I know some of these numbers. I can tell you what the Kelsey brothers do every month. Right? And it's a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, their numbers aren't that crazy. Oh what? Kelsey Brothers. Audio? Uh Oh, I guess I'm thinking video. See, see, see somebody sent me that. This, whenever somebody sends me that tens of millions of dollars these people are making, yeah, they yeah. always, somebody literally did this to me this week. They sent me Interesting. Club Shay Shay videos and Travis Kelsey videos on YouTube, Travis and Jason. Yeah. And they was like, he's getting millions of views and they're only getting tens of thousands. Like, I'm like, yeah. it's the audio. Interesting. Audio, they're doing like 10 to 12 million a month. Wow. So how many episodes do they do a week? I don't know, you know. It's a good question. Is it one? I don't know. Do you know at one time, and, and, and Joe Rogan can say, I remember at one point, Joe Rogan was literally had 100 million listens in a month. Yeah. Like 100 million downloads in a month. This is before the Spotify deal. So when you see the Brinks truck get backed up. Doesn't he do that regularly? Like, I, I, I'm so... I don't, I don't know about now, but I'm talking about when he first got the Spotify deal, it was 100 million Insane. downloads. I'm just talking about audio. I ain't even talking about the video. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I'm just talking about audio. Wow, wow. Yeah, well, yeah, it's not even a conversation. <laughs> like, yeah, like, but it's okay. Be it's okay. I, there's no way that you would know that because that number's not visible anywhere. Yeah, 
So there's I just guess. no way that people would put it together. You are on the back end of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I am. let's That's do some Ask an Idiot, my boy, because I got to get back to my idiot. daughter. Uh, I do want to talk about one thing before oh, we get go. to the Ask an Idiot, man. It's just this simple culture war that's still going on it's just you know dividing families it's dividing people i mean and i, I just don't even get it at this point i mean at whether you're gaza whether you're israel at some point you have to decide who's going to be rookie of the year, Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese. <laughs> I, I don't even think there's a discussion. This is a discussion, you think? This is the, this is a discussion that's happening. Oh. Um, I, the other thing, I don't like. I don't think people need to discredit Angel Reese. <laughs> it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? No, I think that like, you got to give it up for her for what she's done this season. Like she's just broke the all-time single-season record for rebounding as a rookie. Yeah, she just and Caitlyn's on pace to break the all the, the single season record for assist as a rookie. She already broke it. No, she hasn't broken it yet. Mm -hmm. She's on her way to breaking it. She broke. No, she didn't break it yet. She broke it. No, she didn't. <laughs> when? When did that? No, she didn't. She's on her, she's on pace to do it. She hasn't broke. She's she's leading the league in assists right now, but she didn't hasn't broken the all time single season assist record. Ah, whatever. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's on pace to break the all time. Um, <laughs> Yeah, rookie record for assists, but she's on pace to break the all-time single-season WNBA record. You said rookie assists. No, I said as a rookie. Oh. Like, Angel broke the all-time single-season record for rebounding as a rookie. Mm -hmm. Caitlin's on, on, on pace to break the all-time single-season assist record as a rookie. Mm -hmm. She's already broken the rookie record. Mm -hmm. But she's, got, she's on pace to break the all-time record. Okay, so here's the... Here's the reality. Okay. And I say this with supreme confidence, having never watched a single WNBA game in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you never in the NBA's history have they have they given a MVP award for rebounds and double doubles over points and assists. That's never happened in the history of the NBA. It's never happened in the history of the WNBA. The only reason why this is a discussion, I think, is because Angel brings a lot of game to the game. She's yes. very exciting. This, like, you can't have one without the other. Yeah, well, you, 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 you can, really but can't. it's fine. It, it wouldn't be as fun. Okay, no, no, but it's it's a fun dynamic. Now, now, so I love the fact that there's this discussion. I love the fact that we're even fucking talking about it. But in terms of what you give an MV, uh, NBA Rookie of the Year award to, you would never highlight rebounds and double doubles over points and assists you just wouldn't it's never been done in history maybe we change that history now for gotta Angel do Reese. It now. so okay that's you fine gotta do if you believe in di you, you want... we could give her the di no no, 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 no that's no, a good no, idea no, no. we could give her the no, di this would not be the, well, who caitlin caitlin yeah, no no caitlin's we're gonna the give the angel the dei no caitlin no caitlin's got points and assists that's what we've always rewarded but if you want to do a white girl doing what she does dei higher points and assists yes scoring and sharing that's what white people do listen WNBA, y'all really want to shake shit up by the way this is a vote there's no doubt in my mind the voters aren't gonna give us why is cheryl swoops so upset at caitlin I don't, maybe I'm missing it. I don't see what, what makes her so upset. I don't even watch the video that says she's upset. Me the too. Title's <laughs> I just saw that. The title's just like, she's upset. And I'm like, oh, man. I could have winged it. These girls can't get along. <laughs> but all I, I saw these girls all get all along. Say, all I saw her say was that they should be co-rookie of the year. Am I tripping? Lisa Leslie said the same thing. WNBA icon, what did Cheryl Swoops say before we do some asking there? WNBA Hall of Fame and broadcaster Cheryl Swoops held an X Spaces on Tuesday to address a controversy regarding her previous statements about Caitlin Clark. Swoops has been criticized as a harsh and by some unfair critic of Clark dating back to the end of Clark's college career. Swoops infamously made questionable statements about the length and statistics of Clark's college career during an appearance on Gilbert Arena's podcast in February. While discussing the topic of how Clark broke the NCAA's all-time basketball points record in her senior year, Swoops suggested Clark played five college seasons and took over 40 shots per game. Swoops was also criticized for a comment that included the phrase 25-year-old playing against 20-year-olds during a discussion about Clark's college success, but Swoops did not directly implicate Clark being older than her listed age. Caitlin Clark right now probably takes about 40 shots a game. <laughs> you have a 25-year-old playing against a 20-year-old. Mm -hmm. Like, 
you sh you should be killing them. Yeah. I don't see the problem. Why don't you just do co rookie? They might. Like. Just <laughs> they why? Might. But why would? Yeah, I mean, they honestly might. There's really nah, it, it, dude. It, giving it to Angel would infuriate. If you really want like a like civil war, <laughs> if you but you can't just really, give it to Angel. Not nah, what do you mean? You got to give it to both. Nah. To, listen. Now, they, now you scared. As rookies, now they both scared. overachieved. Now you scared. As rookies, they both overachieved. Give it, give it to Angel, bro. Now, if I had a vote, yeah. If I was voting, yeah. If I was voting, yeah. I would give it to um, Angel. I think Just you're. Just because I like chaos. Yes, that's oh, a thing. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> now, now, like, ah. that's a thing. Nah, but that's like, I, I, can, I can see a vote for co rookie of the year. I think that that any white person voting is should be worth three fifths of an actual vote. I like and that. if with that, like that Caitlyn still wins, I think they should give it to Angel anyway. I liked it. What do you think about I that? Liked it. I, I think that's like how that you idea. that's how you create controversy. That's how you get people excited about this lesbian shit. <laughs> It's not lesbian no more, bro. Man. This is not a what, lesbian sport no more. What are you talking no about? Yeah, you, you know, you're right. Once they got the straight girls in there looking bad, like, it really changed the dynamic. That's what it's... It's something to it. No, for real. Because, <laughs> no, once the straight girls in there was looking bad, all of a sudden, now we're watching, now we're into it. But before, when it was the Bow Wows... I liked it then, too. I liked it then too. Nah, I bro. did. You I, want some? You want some cutie patoots? Nah, them girls too young. I will say this though. I'm not, too young. Let's do some asking this. We got pissed bills. That's Don't I'm they got to be in their twenties to even be in the league? I'm forty six. No, Diddy, bro. So a twenty year old girl, you can't yeah, lust that looks over. Crazy. Nah, forty six. At forty six, look at a twenty year old. Can't look at a twenty something year old oh, girl. Oh man! Ain't they tall as oh, hell? Oh man, I can't <laughs> wait. Them to, girls are tall as hell. You know you got a hell? daughter, right, bro? Yeah. All right. <laughs> what about it? This is all going to change. We're going to watch yeah. how this changes over the years. Don't say, don't tell them nothing. Oof. I didn't Chris, say. Don't tell them nothing. <laughs> We're going to watch how this changes over the years. Bro. You're gay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you wish your daughter was. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. I'm telling you, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put that lesbian shit on nobody. <laughs> <laughs> that stud love is different. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's how you get the microplastic. Man, that stud love is different. Paper rock scissors. Ha! Don't insult me. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Don't no. ever no. insult a stud by what's, playing paper rock scissors. Yo, what's paper? <laughs> <laughs> what's paper? I know what rock is. I know what scissors is. What the fuck is paper? Show? That is neither one. When you're dealing with two studs. No, but if you go if scissors, they rub clits. Rock is somebody straps up. But what's oh, paper? Oh, shit. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, rock, paper, scissors is how lesbians have sex. Oh, no, I just was thinking scissors, scissors, scissors. <laughs> it's usually scissors, 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 but if you got a stud, then that's rock. They get the strap. But what's paper? Rock, paper, scissors. The tongue. That's the, the tongue paper. The tongue would be the paper. Yeah, the tongue would be the paper. Mm. The rock is the strap. Of course. The, the tongue scissors, is the, the paper, scissors. and the scissor is the scissor. Nah, but what's, we could do better than paper or something else. The tongue? You think it's better than the tongue? Yeah. What's paper? Go buy yourself some new overalls. Is it money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, go buy yourself some new overalls. There you go. Hey, we're not fucking tonight. Yo, salute to all hey. the studs. Yo, studs be running down on me. Yo, studs be running down on me. Like, yo, Charlotte, you got a problem with us? Charlotte, man. All right, I don't have no problem with the studs, okay? Do they really run just down? just toxic, and it needs to be acknowledged, okay? The same way men Damn. get credit for being toxic, studs, y'all have to start getting credit for being toxic, too. I can't too. imagine three girls running down Charlotte, man, in the exact same same outfit he's wearing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Staring the fuck out my security. Yeah. Can't know what to do. Okay. They don't know who to protect. I'm like, yo, like, yo, yo, chill, It's son. the Spider-Man meme. Like, chill. There's, there's all three of you I'm lesbians. Like, chill. The city's under that big ass t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you got to prove it's you. You show me your city. <laughs> look, look, I got pecs. Look. Everybody chill out. Right. Listen, shout out to Squarespace. Thanks again to Squarespace for supporting this week's episode of The Brilliant Idiots, man. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online, whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Squarespace Blueprint 
Choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up. Tailor to your brand or business and optimize for every device. Easily launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated, optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. With Fluid Engine, the next generation website editor from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. Choose your website starting point and customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. Scratch your imagination online with Fluid Engine engine included in any new Squarespace site, okay? Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's do some asking idiots. Mike Hurst 4, if y'all could switch bodies and do a day in each other's careers, would you? Ooh. I'm trying to think the thing... Mm -hmm. that I would be most excited to do in your... Scroll back up, Chris. Um, no, that'd be, cra that'd be crazy. I don't know, because I have too much of a fear of stand-up, so I could never do that. Yeah, but you want to do it. I don't want to do it. Yeah. I am in awe of stand-up comedians. I can come to watch you and Duval and 85 South Show and Donnell and Jess Hilarious and any of those people any day of the week. I think y'all are maniacs for going on that stage by yourselves. Fair enough. And trying to make all of those people laugh. And I think it is incredible when y'all do it. And I just don't think that is the... I think stand-up is the hardest thing to do on stage by yourself. That's just my personal opinion. It is what it is. I, I, I respect the art of it too much to ever play with it. The same way you don't play boxing, you don't play motherfucking stand -up. But in this situation, we would be doing it, so. I don't know. Cause imagine I go up there and bomb, because I'm you. I'm just, I'm, I'm just in your body. I'm still me. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you what I'm oh, that saying? would be crazy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you got to just open a set with one oh, word. I already know what I would do, though. One word. Nah, I already know what I would do. <laughs> yeah. I would do that just for a day. Just dab the people. One up. thing. Yeah, well, well. I just got one thing I want to do. What, what, what? No, that's not it. It wouldn't be that. But I would do. I don't even want to say it because I've been trying to get Andrew to actually do this for the longest. You can believe it. <laughs> Where for one day, I go in front of every single different community. And, you rip and just up. tell jokes about that community. Yeah. <laughs> so I show up as Andrew Schultz. I say this to black people. Then I go say this to Asians. Then I go say this to K's. Then I go say this to transgenders. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all I want. So you want to tank his career? Is what it wouldn't tank it. <laughs> That's what I do Andrew already. Andrew is funny. <laughs> I go to the Middle East. I do it. I go oh, to Europe. Yeah, I do it. I go to all the different mean? communities. Yeah, but you're going to be doing it. <laughs> Yeah, and you're just well, going to be saying Yeah, you're going to say how you well, say things. Well, guess what I'm coming in and do. Hey, team, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, turn the camera sideways. Let's fucking put this. You know what I'm saying? Come on, let's go. The fuck is you talking about? You do that? That's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, that's it. Show has to go. Oh, we got to finish with this one. Okay, go. Gareth and Harold. He's not here either. Say three things nice about Taylor without laughing. She's beautiful. She's brilliant. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What else? She's beautiful. She's brilliant. And um, she's incredible at uh, getting the videos up in the exact moment you need that. <laughs> <laughs> you should have bet, Gareth. <laughs> okay. okay, you go. What's your thing? What? Say three nice things about Taylor? yeah, yeah. yeah. Without laughing? Yeah. Her mother makes incredible cakes and pies. That's good. And I love eating her mother's cakes and pies. That's good. They that's, taste so good. It seems so like warm, compliments about so soft. Taylor's mom. That's but, her mom. Yeah. This is she, having a nice mom. That's, that's, she that's got a facts. great mom. That's facts. And um, that's all I got is two, yo. Five. Five. I don't have three. I, don't have three. I can't do three without laughing, okay? Uh, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank Peace. you for listening.